In 2020, the world has gone out of its way to seem terrifying. But if you're feeling overwhelmed by the deadly virus, the police brutality, the murder hornets, the Nazi sympathizer in the White House, or whatever crazy shit this year is going to throw at us in July, you can always take comfort in the fact that the world you're living in will never be as terrifying as the one inside Sid Davis's mind. (laughs) Makers of such classic social guidance films as LSD, Trip or Trap, Alcohol is Dynamite, and Seduction of the Innocent. His was a terrifying world entirely populated by venereal disease, child molesters, and one-eyed children that only learn to respect the power of scissors the hard way. But he's one of our favorite subjects for a segment that we call God Awful Mini. 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 So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched... Girls Beware by Sid Davis. It's the sequel to his masterpiece, Boys Beware, which was a cautionary tale about the danger of child molesters. And Girls Beware is a very woke gender reversal exercise about the dangers of child molesters. Turns out, Sid Davis realized this, child molesters are not all gay like he assumed before. And despite all the problems with that, The general message of the two movies together is beware men. And that's honestly not the worst idea. That's true. It's the best one he ever put in a movie. Yeah. (laughs) Give him a little positive introduction there. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and ruin that. Noah, how bad was this mini? Well, if you like the missing child pictures on the milk garden, but you never get to find out where those bodies were found, you will love this mini. Jesus, <laughs> so fucked up. It's so fucked up. Oh. All right, so we're going to start this one. I was a little 10 minute video. We'll have it linked in the show notes. It's it's a fun watch if you like terrible things. So it starts off by setting a record I think for the least appropriate music for the message because <laughs> the words say girls beware, but the music says that those four dogs on each other's shoulders got a trench coat and now they're going to get into the club after all. Uh, it felt like that was just the music that some people were playing in like the next room next to where they <laughs> Right, shot, yeah, you know? exactly. It was so wildly And, and that there were four dogs that got a trench coat <laughs> trying to sneak into something. I don't know. Also, this starts with the, the title card for the title of the movie. It says, Girls Beware. Why can't they get a title card to hold still? I don't. Is that like technology we didn't have? Just put it on a table, put a camera on the table, and you're good for a second, right? You would think, but they didn't figure that shit out until the early 70s, I think. Yeah, right. No idea. So we get this shaky-ass Girls Beware title card. We get the shaky-ass in cooperation with the Inglewood PD and school district. I'm sure that's a point of pride for both of them. Yeah, Kind of made it seem like there were other groups that did not cooperate. Though. You know, like it was kind of passive aggressive. Like, uh, honestly, I expected the next title card to be like, and fuck the Rotary Club, Steve. <laughs> fuck your stupid fucking Rotary Club, asshole. All right. So now we're going to meet our narrator, Norma Neufner, policewoman. <laughs> That's it's such a lie name. <laughs> like, right? Norma. Well, yeah, Norma. Okay. Neufner. 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 Mm. I was like trying to see if it, the letters rearranged or if it spelled something backwards or something. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, it's disappointing. I was just surprised they had police women in 1961. I didn't figure that was a thing. Well, yeah. so the, the, here's the thing, though. In Boys Beware, it was a man cop telling us stuff. So now it's a lady cop. Sid Davis, very progressive. Right. Yeah. He did the woke gender reversal. Now he's got a female police officer. Good. Good point. But uh, she's like, yeah, I'm a police woman. No, I have sex with men, just to be clear. Uh, I take <laughs> I take the calls from hysterical us people. So yep, that's yeah. what I do. Exactly. Yes. She's working on the lady crimes. She doesn't even get she doesn't get like a badge or a, she's not a police officer, to be clear. Like we see her later on the job just wearing a dress, no uniform. Yep. Yeah. So she's on the phone with a mother worried about her missing daughter. And we're going to flash back to that missing daughter. This is Judy. Now, Judy is advertising her babysitting services at the supermarket. And she gets a phone call from a man she's never met that says he'll be there by to pick her up for a babysitting job in 15 minutes. Right. And mom and dad aren't home at this moment. So Judy leaves a message on that, like, super important notepad next to the phone. Like, (laughs) this, the telephone and notepad culture was crazy serious. Like, we caught the end of it. Did you have that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. My parents were so 
fucking serious about correctly noting whatever you you answer every phone call right away. Oh, so I always <laughs> got in trouble for taking the pencil, right? Like, because if I needed a pencil, I would take that one, and I'll, no, the fuck, I wouldn't. But yeah. Oh, I yeah, I, I learned that lesson real fast. Dad stretching the co- the cord to the phone one time, trying to get a pen or a pencil that wasn't quite close enough, Furious. staring at you the whole time, Furious. yeah, spitting right, and screaming, right. yeah. yeah. Yeah, and also, by the way, this apparently took place back in the era when bow tie wasn't exclusively a gimmick or a quirk because the child molester that picks her up <laughs> has a bow tie. Just disturbing. That's a clue. I'm sorry. That's got, that needs to be a clue all the time. <laughs> all right, so now we get Judy's mom coming home. She finds the note. She follows up. She calls the number, and it's just some random lady. And the video feels the need to show us some random lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Also, we don't need the narrator and the movie. Yes, just as right. Like, <laughs> they landed on this insane compromise. We're watching movie clips with no audio and a narrator explaining what's very clearly happening on the audio in the clip that we're watching. Just use it's it's a right. strange. Yeah, thing if you would on. shut up and let this lady talk, she could tell us what's going on. <laughs> right. right. But so the mom calls this number. And it turns out it's just a fake. It's like a random number. Mm. So some woman picks up and is like, yeah, I have no idea about your daughter. I, I get these calls all the time. I, th- I think a kidnapper just writes like eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine is his go to <laughs> fake number. And that's me. And like, I don't know. Yeah. But mom is curiously nonplussed by this. By midnight, though, she starts to get worried. I'm like by fucking midnight. That's so slow. Right. Really? Yeah. You know, already, as soon as you make this phone call. Okay, this is a kidnapper giving an obvious fake number. What other scenario was there? Right. Or at least it was your like, it's your daughter lying so she could go hang out with her boyfriend or something. Yeah. She kidnapped herself. (laughs) (laughs) No, a fake kidnap, but like a prank by her hilarious daughter from 1961. (laughs) That's that's great. If that's what you know, that we find out very quickly. No. And then because this is a Sid Davis movie and Sid Davis doesn't fuck around, the narrator's like, a week later, we found her rotting corpse picked clean by buzzards <laughs> along a lonely desert highway. <laughs> and by the way, we're still listening to the cartoon dog music the entire time. It does not stop. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Something so fun is happening next to this movie. Yeah, so fun. Right? <laughs> so, OK. And then Norma has to go break the news to Judy's mom. And here's the actual line from the video. You can never find the right words to tell a mother that her daughter has been murdered. Yeah. Um, what would that even mean? And secondly, do you nail it when it comes to telling moms about their murdered sons? Are you better with dads? Why? That seems oddly that's, specific in terms of nouns. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird to make that distinction. But yeah, that's a tough conversation. Just like, okay, so funny story. Nope. Nope. Okay, that's a bad start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a great philosopher. No, no. Uh, According to the Oxford Webster's English Dictionary, Dictionary. defines murder rape. <laughs> mm. I mean, that's a that's apropos. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and then the the narrator comes on and, and and goes like, you know, Judy never did anything wrong. She was just careless in who she trusted. It's like, yeah, he was wearing a fucking bow tie. You should you should have known. That. Yeah, dude. Tucker Carlson shows up to pick you up. You've never met him before. Don't get, that's ridiculous. Right. Fuck out of here. Is that a bow tie and a monocle? What do you do? Are you, are you an evil Kentucky colonel? You have to tell me. Are you carrying around a Persian cat to stroke? Hold on a second. <laughs> so, yeah. So now we meet Barbara, the gallant to Judy's goofus. Right now. Right. Barbara is out. Uh, she's she's babysitting one night and a guy comes by to murder rape her and she sends him next door. <laughs> well, yeah. So the, the narrator cop is like, all right, I'm not saying it was your dead daughter's fault, but Barbara is a great example of how not to get murdered. And literally, yeah, apparently a sexual predator shows up to the front door while while Barbara's home by herself. And she's like, uh, try the next house over. See if you can get any success yes, going there. Right, yeah, they're here. careless with their children. <laughs> what? <laughs> I wanted the neighbors to come over and just be like, hey, did you fucking send this guy <laughs> to our house? Are you serious? I sent him to your house. You sent him to my house. All right, this is funny. All right. What about asshole across the street? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there we asshole go. Asshole across the street. And teach him to mow his fucking lawn. And okay, so now we meet Sally and Elizabeth at the movies. Right. 
and these two older boys, they, the fucking narrator describes them as older boys that would like to be their first. They're fucking men, right? That's the, the term for that much older boys. These are 45 year olds. Yes. But also giants. They're like <laughs> seven feet tall and they show up at this theater full of kids. Really upsetting. And they want to be friends with Sally and Elizabeth. And they like lean over the thing and then they jump over the seat and they're sitting next to him. It's very creepy. The whole thing. Well, and the narrator says, this is the weirdest line in the whole fucking movie. The narrator says, friendships are easily made in a crowded theater. <laughs> right. Are they? How so? The movie. Like people start shouting across the crowded theater. Like, so what kind of music do you listen to? <laughs> what? What kind of music? Never mind. Okay. Does anyone in my area closer want to be friends? No? I'm a giant. I'm 45 year old giant. <laughs> yeah. And so the, the lies like they were secret. The two girls were secretly pleased that two older boys talked over the movie in an unsolicited effort to flirt with them. And I'm like, oh, Sid Davis wrote these lines, didn't he? Yep. Sure did. Sid, a man wrote yeah, hey, those lines. Girls beware of Sid Davis. That's what we learned yeah, right there. Right. So then during intermission of the movie. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> Did movies have an intermission? I, I guess. Is that a thing? I guess in 1961, that's when this movie came out. Yeah. Back in the day of the 23 cent hamburger, apparently movies had intermissions. Wasn't everybody smoking like four cigars in the theater already? What did they need? Yeah, <laughs> right? For? Yeah, exactly. But during intermission, Sally showed off to all of her friends all this mature dick she was swinging around on. And then the older boys offered him a ride. Now, Elizabeth knew better. Right. She tried her best to cock block Sally. Yeah. But it didn't work out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Elizabeth's pretty great here. <laughs> the guys are like, oh, you ladies need a ride home. And she's like, nope, we got a ride. <laughs> and Sally's like, hey, Elizabeth, I, I think they want to hang out with us is what that meant. And she, <laughs> She's like, nope, we're 14. You're 45. Please leave. <sighs> so good. And then finally it was like, all right, what if we just give Sally a ride home alone. <laughs> and Elizabeth, she's like, that doesn't really, doesn't really make any sense. I said, my parents are already giving us both a ride. Like, why would we both have cars going to the same place? <laughs> she's my fucking favorite. All right. So, so now we cut to Sally in the front seat sandwich between the two boys here. And she's pretty impressed with them, like having a car and, you know, an IRA. <laughs> Did cars just have like a bench in the front for a long time? They did. Yeah. Bench seating. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, no, it's just, it's just a big ass fucking couch in the front. Okay. I guess I've been in some trucks like that, but yeah, yeah. You just you don't, you don't picture it with cars. Okay. Old timey movie stuff. <laughs> right. But these boys drove right past her house and straight to lookout peak. And that's when she knew she was in trouble. Now, I don't want to make a joke about this scene because what they're trying to show is like apparently these two boys gang raped this girl, right? And not Something a lot of horrible like that. Yeah. Yeah. Not a lot of humor in that. And there shouldn't be. But the way that, the, of course, it's a fucking 1961 movie that they're going to show in schools. They can't talk about that. They should, but they can't at that point. So what they do to, to like show you that that's happening is both of these men go in to kiss this girl at the same time. At, yeah, at the same time, they bump heads. Like, we watch yes. them smash heads like cartoon characters. It seems like you just do all the permutations one at a time. You know? <laughs> I don't. I, the, the logistics of that fucked me right up. <laughs> you guys are going straight for the DA. All right, all right. I just yeah. feel like we can work up to that. Just <laughs> play rock, paper, scissors or something. <laughs> all right, so by midnight, her parents started to worry because that's when parents start to worry, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's legally just a date until then in 1961 like kidnapping doesn't count until midnight yes. yeah right right exactly so they call elizabeth they find out that you know she took a ride home from these boys and that's about the time the cops found her walking dazedly home from lookout peak the, the fucking narrator says it was a night they'd all remember i'm like that's a weird way to describe a rape but yes i'm sure it is yeah. And hey, uh, maybe the police just go to lookout peak instead of patrolling the walk home. That'd yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. All right. So now we're going to cut to our final example here. This is where we're going to cut over to the soda shop to remind you that rape is hiding everywhere. 
By the way, burgers were 23 cents back then. It says that on the sign, and that's all I could focus on for a second. It's like, it's so antiquated that I didn't even know how to make a cent symbol on Google Drive. I almost had to put like dollars (laughs) (laughs) 0.23. Yeah, the problem with this for me was all I wanted, like all I can think about for the rest of the movie was I want Burgers, malts, fries, chicken, fish, and shrimp. Which it says, it's like, <laughs> yes, in all that those order. <laughs> I'm that guy who shows up and is like, technically the sign says 23 cents for burgers, malts, fries, chicken, fish, and shrimp. <laughs> if you want to get technical, I would like all those things. Very here small are my amount pennies. of each of yeah. those. Yeah. But this is the malt shop where Mary met Robert. Now, Robert is uh, the fucking is to malt shops as Roy Moore is to Hot Topics, apparently. Right. <laughs> That's the guy. And the narrator, Mm. I love the narrator, Norma Neufner, so much right here because she just lays into this motherfucker, right? She is so roasting this son of a bitch from the second. She's like, (laughs) immediately he's on screen. She's like, and here's this motherfucker right here. (laughs) Finished high school, no fucking job, living in his mom's basement. But yeah, he's... uh creepily saying hello to high school girls and he's like well, 19 or 20. Yeah, I was, and, and I don't even know if if high school girls is like this girl actually looks like 12 or 13. The other girl Actually, look, yes. Th- this one is middle school. Yes. Yeah. I would say if I had to name an age, 11, super, 12. Super super fucking young. Yeah. Terrifying. So this one was kind of disturbing. Yeah. But Mary was sure impressed that the older boy wanted to talk to her. Uh so she <laughs> rode off with him. So Robert goes in for the they, they show the two of them at a, at a park and we see Robert go in for the kiss and the camera turns away, you know, like because that's it's it's a grown fucking man and a little girl and they don't want to actually have to have this happen. So the camera turns away, which is good, except it's like so goddamn fast and embarrassed to be there. It's the most jarring pan I've ever witnessed outside of one of those camera phone things in a natural disaster. <laughs> right. <laughs> the movie literally looks the other way while a grown man kisses a <laughs> That's what happens here. Well, I, okay. And and then we get this bizarre fucking ending. And this is the whole reason we're doing this movie is because of the way it ends. We should now show the dire consequences of, you know, whatever just happened. We're not going to talk about what it was, right? And the dire consequences apparently involve this girl being pulled out of school and taken away from her parents. Okay, that's what I thought they said. That's insane. Like, what is the movie telling? What is the movie trying to say here? I don't know. Right. Because it, it's like it, it, the, the movie comes on. And she's like, well, finally, she told her parents what happened. But by then it was too late for advice. What? I have no idea what the fuck that means. And then they said she had to be, quote, taken out of school and placed under the guidance of juvenile authorities for getting raped. God, the 60s were fucked up. So the moral is there's a there's a line after which you don't tattle on your molester or else you end up in a foster home. Right. Fuck. Yeah, happening. Exactly. I don't fucking know. It, it, and like, by the way, the whole thing ends by zooming in on a file, which is presumably Mary's permanent record. Right. So it's just ominous. And then everyone will always know you've been raped. Kind of a moment at the end of this terrifying shit. Those aren't real, right? There's no permanent record. I'm pretty sure there's not. I hope it's certainly okay. hope there's not. And quick before I'm called upon to summarize the moral of that story, we're going to close the mini off until next time. Don't forget, everyone's trying to kill you and you are in perpetual danger. Don't worry, Sid, I'm keeping it alive.